says between 140 to 150 people will lose their jobs at the Milton facility. That news doesn't sit well with many small business owners who say the layoffs are already affecting their bottom line. Once a week they're coming for big water and I don't even see it no more. That big water. So is, is money missing? Mario Bua is a small business owner in Milton. He's owned the original Italian pizza and restaurant here on Broadway for 24 years. Bua says before the layoffs began, his small restaurant used to be packed with ConAgra employees for lunch or dinner. I, I just feel people now, and I in the 10, I said 10 people, and now I'm missing about five, six people missing. In June, ConAgra announced they would gradually begin eliminating 140 to 150 positions at the end of the summer. The Milton plant is one of Northumberland County's largest employers. It manufactures food like Chef Boyardee. Jason Latier works at Pizza Town, which has stood directly across the street from the plant for nearly 40 years. Some of the guys used to come in after work. They don't come in after work because they're not there. So. You know, it's unfortunate, but big business is big business, I guess. These two pizza shops sit on opposite sides of town, but have been here for a combined total of 54 years. But they may be the exception. The small businesses around here, just that you see them dry up every, every year. There's, there's new businesses go out of business. There's, you know, some new places have started, but um, ultimately there's not too many left, left of us around. Both hope local leaders are able to attract more big businesses to the area in the coming years before more small businesses find themselves shutting their doors. Live in the News Center, Brian Sheehan, Fox 56 News, first at 10. We have an update tonight into a ho homicide investigation in Mount Carmel. Police say the investigation into Penny Mansfield's death is closed. That's according to the Daily Item. Robert Thurner was the person of interest in her death. He was pronounced dead after hanging himself in his prison cell over the weekend. He was arrested Friday for probation violation following Mansfield's death. Police found her body beaten in the backyard. A man is dead tonight after getting hit by a pickup truck in Mahoning Township. It happened last night around 10. Police say a truck headed west on 443 hit 42-year-old John Marciconis Jr., who was walking in the lane. No charges have been filed against that driver. More than a dozen dogs are recovering at Griffin Pond Animal Shelter after being removed from a home. Humane officers responded to complaints about the conditions of animals living inside a Scott Township home. There were 14 dogs, one ferret, two lizards, two snakes, and one hedgehog, which is illegal to own as a pet in Pennsylvania. A cruelty investigator says the home was not livable. You just have to keep in mind that you're doing your job. The animals come first. Um, and you just want to get them out of there and you want the, you want them to have the right care. You want them to be seen by that. Make sure that we're treating all their problems. There will be charges filed by the Lackawanna County DA against the owners for animal cruelty. Today is Columbus Day, celebrated by parades and for some of you a day off of work. But there is controversy surrounding it, especially recently. Fox 56's Katie Berlin shows us why some are opting out of Columbus Day for Indigenous Peoples Day. His stoic glare and do forward point is a familiar one, pointing towards what was thought to be the new world. But today, people are protesting and cities are voting to observe Indigenous People Day in place of what is currently Columbus Day. The truth needs to come out. By his own admission, Columbus was, uh, had committed many, many atrocities and was really the author of the transatlantic slave trade. He led and participated in the annihilation of over 3 million indigenous people. People in our area have mixed feelings about the day and monuments, standing tall in many communities like this one in downtown Scranton. I think it symbolizes that history can often be misrepresented and it takes a long time for things to eventually um, for the truth to come into light for a lot of things. Helena is a student at Marywood University. She says Christopher Columbus isn't accurately portrayed in grade school. There should be more of a recognition towards the indigenous people, like, like having more monuments towards them. Others felt there's no need to change the day. If it wasn't for Columbus, you know, you would have never came over to America and founded it. We wouldn't know what it would be like. But he also doesn't see the problem with indigenous people having a holiday as well. If they feel like they deserve to have a day like that, then by all means have a day for that. We have so many holidays for everything else, why not?
We spoke to former Pittston Mayor Michael Lombardo when they unveiled their restored Columbus statue just last month. They're really outward signs of you know, the priorities in our community. And this one, in fact, certainly represents the pride of the Italian-American community, which is a big part of this community. Helena says the most important thing is dialogue to talk about what this day and these monuments really mean. Katie Berlin, Fox 56 News, first at 10. Since this is pretty controversial, we want to know what you think. Should Columbus Day be changed to Indigenous Peoples Day? Go to our Fox 56 Wolf TV Facebook page and let us know your thoughts. This state and I love the people of this state. President Donald Trump will be at the Harrisburg International Airport on Wednesday afternoon. He'll be holding a private invitation only event somewhere on the airport grounds. The president is expected to talk about his tax plan, one that if passed would lower the corporate tax and small businesses tax. It helps promote who we are as, as a region and tell the story about uh, South Central Pennsylvania. So it's, it's all good. This will be the president's sixth visit to the mid-state since the start of his campaign. Our very own Brian Sheehan will be at the airport Wednesday with a full report. Wildfires are burning out of control in California's wine country. So far, 10 people have died and the fire has grown to more than 5,000 acres. The fast-moving flames have destroyed or damaged more than 1,500 homes in the Anaheim Hills area alone. Roughly 1,000 others remain threatened and hundreds are being evacuated from nearby towns. The Canyon Fire 2 started yesterday morning. I think what we're going to find when we talk to seasoned fire professionals uh, here uh, in the next several days is they're going to talk about conditions uh, that they have not seen before. And we were saying that two years ago in 2015 when the Valley and the Butte fires burned in these same areas, uh, seeing conditions we hadn't seen. Well, I think we've raised the bar again in California in just terms of the, the conditions that we're facing uh, and the destruction and devastation. And so far, that fire has burned more than 5,700 acres. New at 10 tonight, Bloomsburg University hosting a special guest tonight to kick off its Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. That speaker, former Cuban President Fidel Castro's daughter. Fox 56's Jade Jarvis live in the News Center tonight. So, Jade, what did she have to talk about? Well, Ryan, Bloomsburg Multicultural Center reached out to Castro's daughter, Alina Fernandez, and brought her to campus to talk about her experiences growing up in Cuba under her father's leadership. And after more than 20 years, I returned to Cuba. Alina Fernandez was born, raised, and spent more than half her life in Cuba. She escaped back in 1993 at the age of 38 and later settled in Miami like many other Cubans. But her experience is slightly different. Her father is the former Cuban president, Fidel Castro. It's, it's like being the daughter of some kind of God that is omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, which is never easy. Alina did not have a good relationship with her father and did not agree with his politics. She shared her personal story tonight with a large crowd inside Bloomsburg's Carver Hall. Her lecture, the first event of the Multicultural Center's Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. The first week of the month is called a week of pride. It's a privilege and an honor. Many of our students um, know a little bit about Cuba, but not much about her father's um, leadership. But they know of the importance and the history behind her father's um, leadership in Cuba. So it's really important to have such um, a person on our campus to talk on that behalf. And students were also excited to kick off their Pride Week with Alina's unique perspective. The fact that we started off with this bang of politics, um, identity, rebellious, you know what I'm saying? Everything that um, is important to someone, it can be important to someone in the audience. Alina told students she returned to Cuba in 2013 to visit her ailing mother. She says it was different from the Cuba she knew 20 years ago with the potential for a better life. These small changes are going eventually to lead to a different way of life and a different society in which I hope freedom will prevail. Elena will return to Miami tomorrow. She says she doesn't do speaking engagements often, so tonight's lecture was a treat for the Bloomsburg community. We also have information on the rest of Bloomsburg's Pride Week events on our website, fox56.com. Reporting live tonight in the News Center, Jay Jarvis, Fox 56 News, first at 10. All right, interesting. Thanks, Jade. A new resource dedicated to women in light of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. How getting mammograms will be so much different. That's coming up next in Health First. And October has continued to just been a wacky month in the world of weather. Coming up, I will show you what the rest of the work week looks like as we carry on with, again, a wacky month. 